I think the thing that really does fascinate me the most about Star Wars Episode 9 has all to do with the major twists and turns that will be coming our way for many of the major characters in the movie by J.J. Abrams. This is Mike Zero. If you guys are new to the channel, do make sure to subscribe to see future Star Wars content. Now, I will say that Supreme Leader Snoke, at least in my point of view, is one of the most mysterious characters in the Star Wars franchise, not just because of his backstory pretty much being a secret, but also the fact that he's been around for a very long time, even before the events of the prequel trilogy era. And to me, I think that that speaks volumes. Now, these past couple of weeks or so, we've been learning a whole lot more about this film when it comes to some of the set leaks, the set designs, the concept art and storyboard descriptions, etc. One of which has all to do with a major hint and or indicator of Snoke's real identity in Star Wars Episode Nine. Now, specifically, a description of a younger version of Supreme Leader Snoke, described to be in a white cloak with a hood off of his head. It's described that Snoke is examining a large fire of a tall structure that appears to be a Jedi temple. It's said that Snoke is standing on a prime Jedi mosaic, nearly the same one seen in The Last Jedi, however at a different temple. It's also described that in the distance there are dead bodies in the same white cloaks that are described as ancient Jedi that have been around for years. The next goes over the younger version of Snoke with a white ignited blade, which is said to be a distant shot. It's described that Snoke eventually vanishes into the dust. So I really want to go over a couple of parts about this that really do connect to what we heard about a couple of weeks ago about Snoke being in the White Cloak and being associated with, of course, the Ancient Jedi and, of course, the Prime Jedi itself. Now, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but we do know that Andy Serkis, J.J. Abrams, and Ryan Johnson know the full story of Snoke's backstory and that they are keeping it a big secret for a real reason in the sequel trilogy in order to really keep things in mind. Now, we do know that the Age of Resistance comic dropping this November will offer a lot of answers about Snoke and we will finally know exactly who he is most likely in that book. However, when it comes to Episode 9, J.J. Abrams exploring little tidbits of Snoke's backstory, it's really giving us an idea here of who he really is. It seems as though that he is indeed associated with ancient Jedi. So, first things first, I want to go over two major things. Is the white cloak that Snoke is described to be wearing, as well as a lightsaber with a white blade. Now, a white blade is only created by a pure kyber crystal. A kyber crystal that's essentially clear. It's not... You know, it wasn't pretty much through the whole entire process of an actual user making it bleed, which turns it red, or anything around those lines. So his lightsaber is white, and we've seen something very similar to that of Ahsoka Tano in Star Wars Rebels, and it's really raising a lot of questions as to exactly who Snoke actually used to be. The other thing is the actual mention of other dead individuals in the background wearing the same exact white cloaks that are described as ancient Jedi. So you can see that J.J. Abrams really wants to tap into the ancient Jedi lore, which he is doing in this film. And we could be learning this in any other format in the movie. Now, the other thing that really does catch my eye, though, is the whole entire thing of Snoke actually watching a burning Jedi temple from what it seems, a tall structure that seems to be a Jedi temple. Now, immediately I'm starting to believe that this is a parallel to what we saw in The Last Jedi where Kylo Ren burns down Luke's Jedi temple and the dead Jedi students in the background. Could it very well be that Snoke instructed Kylo Ren to do this because Snoke did it himself years and years ago before the events of the prequel trilogy? That would honestly make the most sense of exactly why Kylo Ren went through with such an act is because not only did Snoke manipulate him, but he also told him what he once did and he was successful at doing it. So, let's say if Snoke is actually, you know, really connected to the ancient Jedi, which it seems like he is. You know, there's a lot of hints and indicators here that he actually was once an actual ancient Jedi before the events of the originals and even the sequel trilogy and even the prequels. So, you can see 
that J.J. Abrams really does have a plan in place here for Episode 9 to explore Snoke's backstory and to really give us some answers as to who he really is, something that we did not get in Episode 8, The Last Jedi. Sadly, a lot of people wanted to learn more about the character, which we didn't. So, looking at Snoke, Andy Serkis, I gotta say, Andy Serkis, very talented actor, very great person. Uh, we're not quite sure if he's actually on board portraying the character of Snoke. He did cancel his appearance at Keystone Comic Con some time ago for a very secret project for motion capture. So that could very well be Snoke in Episode 9, I think it's pretty safe to say. Now, as far as Snoke goes in the actual story, I don't think that he's going to be an actual prominent figure in this film. JJ will be exploring him here and there on and off in order to give us an idea of exactly who he really is. So what do you guys think about all of this? You know, the whole entire description of him wearing the white cloak, the white bladed lightsaber, the other dead individuals wearing the same white cloaks in the background that are described as ancient Jedi, which is a dead giveaway that Snoke most likely is. Anyways, guys, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.